Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I'm here to help you make sense of everything you've been learning in class. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you about how to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar. I know, it's a little bit of a challenge. If you're struggling with this a little bit, leave me a comment and let me know. Go ahead and press the like and subscribe button since you're there. And let's get started. You are going to need your notes, something to write with, and possibly a periodic table. Let's get started. So these words polar and nonpolar, these shouldn't be brand new words. We've talked about that in the past and we were talking about bonding. Covalent bonds, you can have polar covalent and nonpolar covalent. So remember a nonpolar bond, that's when we're sharing those electrons equally because the electronegativity, there's barely any difference. Now for Vesper and for deciding if a whole molecule is polar or nonpolar because that's much, much different than just determining a bond. We can have a polar bond and not have a polar molecule. And that's what we're trying to decide here, whether the whole molecule is polar or not. For Vesper, we're gonna keep it simple. If it's a diatomic molecule, then that's going to be a nonpolar bond. Or if it's a bond between a carbon and a hydrogen, that bond is also going to be nonpolar. And that's gonna be the only two kind of bonds we consider nonpolar. All the rest, we're gonna consider polar bonds. Remember, polar bonds happen because of the unequal sharing of electrons. Electrons are unequally shared when there is a larger electronegativity difference. And if it's not diatomic and it's not carbon and hydrogen, it's going to be polar. Okay, so let's get to this. We're gonna to have to be able to identify polar and nonpolar bonds so we can figure out polar or nonpolar molecules. So let's look at some rules. If all of the bonds are nonpolar, that's going to be a nonpolar molecule. If we've got some polar bonds in our molecule, we need to analyze this a little bit closer. Okay, so we've already determined. We've got polar bonds present. So the next thing we gotta do is look at the shape. When we look at the shape, we need to decide if the shape is symmetrical or not. These are the shapes that are considered to be symmetrical. Now, when I say symmetrical, I don't necessarily mean that you could draw a middle line and fold it on itself. I mean like if you're playing tug of war with somebody and you each have a rope and you're the exact same strength and you're never gonna win, never gonna win, never gonna win, that's symmetrical. Let's look at these shapes and see how they have symmetry. Linear. If this person and this person had the exact same strength and they were pulling, no one's ever gonna win. Symmetrical. Trigonal planar. Again, if you have three different people pulling on three different ropes, but they're all the exact same strength, no one's going to win tug of war. Symmetrical. Tetrahedral. Again, four ropes, four people with four equal strengths pulling, no one's going to win. Symmetrical. I don't know if you've noticed, One thing all of these models have in common, um, there's no lone pairs on the central atom. That's my helpful tip. No lone pairs on the central atom, symmetrical. Okay, so let's get back to talking about polar and nonpolar. If the shape is symmetrical and it has the same element bonded all the way around the central atom, that's a nonpolar molecule. No one wins tug of war, nonpolar. Sometimes you can have these symmetrical shapes, but not all the atoms all the way around are the same element. For example, here, we said the two white atoms had the same strength if we were playing tug of war. Oh, but look at this green one. This green one is much, much stronger. So even though this is a symmetrical shape, they don't cancel each other out. Someone's going to win tug of war. And if someone's going to win tug of war, that's a polar molecule. Symmetrical shape, different elements all the way around, polar molecule. Now, what if that shape was asymmetrical? Let's look at those asymmetrical shapes first. We've got bent. Now, we looked at two bent shapes, and it really doesn't matter which one you look at, because remember, these lone pairs, they're not playing tug of war. The only things that can play tug of war are the actual atoms. So if you have ropes and you're pulling this way, 
that molecule is going to move this way because there's no one over here to cancel that out. And so there's a tie at tug of war. When we have a bent shape, someone is winning tug of war. And remember, when we're winning tug of war, that's a polar molecule. Bent shapes, always polar. And you know what? There's lone pairs on the central atom. No lone pairs, nonpolar. Lone pairs, polar. So that's bent. Let's look at trigonal pyramidal. Oh dang, look at that. Lone pair. Lone pair, polar. If we've got these three atoms playing tug of war, they're all pulling in a downward motion. There's no one up here to cancel that out. Someone's winning tug of war. When you win tug of war, polar molecule. So my biggest takeaway is molecules with polar bonds, they can still be nonpolar, remember? If it all cancels out because no one wins tug of war because we got equal strength all the way around the central atom, nonpolar. So even if every single bond is polar, so if this is a polar bond, this is a polar bond, this is a polar bond, I feel a little bit like Oprah, this is a polar bond, all polar, but no one's winning tug of war, nonpolar molecule. That's our lesson on polar and nonpolar molecules. Now, I just zipped right through the Vesper shapes. So if that's where you were struggling, I have a video on that. Check out the entire playlist. If you're watching this video, then I know you're trying to make an A in chemistry. So go and press the like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends if they're struggling in chemistry. Until next time, bye y'all.